Hello, good morning. Welcome to another session of Graphology Questions and Queries. Let's go through today's session with all the questions that you might have, and let's see what we can answer. So over the past one week, I've been receiving many queries about different aspects of graphology. But one very common query is, how often is or how how uh, important is a good signature? How important is a good quality or a good design for a signature? So the best way I can answer this question is by this. Let's say I've got a handkerchief for you. And this handkerchief is neatly folded and it's got a good uh, it's got a good fold and it, it's all neat and nice and clean. Okay. So when I say, please pay one or two dollars or whatever it is for this handkerchief, you're like, okay, you're like, fine, I'll take it. It looks neat and tidy. But the same fresh, new, clean handkerchief, if I crumple it up and I say, okay, here, take your new handkerchief, suddenly it becomes unappealing. It looks, it feels a little awkward, correct? So whenever you have a crumpled handkerchief or a, a, a messed up thing which doesn't look good, even though you know that this is brand new, it's clean, it's unused, and it's just the same as it was previously, but the way it looks suddenly gives you a negative thought in your mind, okay? So whenever you have a uh, unclean fold or a fold which is not very good then the person is going to have a negative kind of a feeling or a feedback whereas in the clean fold it becomes much more positive it becomes much more uh, effective that way okay so whenever you come across a signature that is messy whenever you come across a signature that is um having unclear letter structures, overlapping, slashes, and hasty letter structures, then that also gives a negative kind of a vibe. The person may be good. The person may be how oh, nice and pleasant or a good person, whatever. But because the signature is a mess, the first impression is that it gives a negative feel. Like I said, this is brand new. The actual cloth doesn't change if I do this. The, the cloth is same. But because it's a mess, it's unattractive and therefore it kind of gets a negative kind of a vibe. It gets a negative kind of a feedback. So the thing is that whenever you have a, a messy signature, just realize that it's going to be kind of attracting negative effect, negative things towards the person because of the way it looks, because of the way it doesn't represent you very well. A clean, well-structured, proper signature will represent you in a much better way than a crumpled or a, a messy signature. Okay. All right, so I've got another question here. Okay. Okay. So the another question here is, what's the difference between the open letter O or a closed letter O? All right. So some people have O which has got an opening on top and some people have O which is normal like it gets closed so whenever you have a o which is open it represents a disconnect or a represent an incomplete thought let's say you want to go and have an ice cream and you have a certain flavor in mind and you want to enjoy that rich flavor of that ice cream 
you go to the ice cream parlor you order that ice cream you eat the ice cream but the taste is not exactly the way you wanted it. it's like uh, i wish i could have had something better but now you finish the ice cream and now your mood is off so that's where the feeling or the thought feels incomplete okay so whenever you are having an open o whether the opening is on top whether the opening is on the side whether the opening is on the bottom the overall effect is that the mind or the thought is not happy at the end of the day or at the end of the activity there's a dissatisfaction let's say you buy yourself a pen and you buy this but this pen so that you would be able to write and you want to take down notes and while writing suddenly the pen stops working the ink is not flowing well and it just uh, looks messy now this is where you again feel irritated it's not a complete thought the experience is not complete if you have too many o's in your handwriting while you write normally this is an indicator that there are many things in your day many activities in your day many targets or many goals which you set which are not complete okay so always i would recommend you to close your letter o and as you close your letter o it will be a much better effect and it will lead to completed activity okay all right Okay. Now we have another question here. Okay. So we have another question here. What does it mean to have a thin letter O or a fat letter O? Okay. So a letter O, which is thin. If let's say your O is supposed to be rounded, but it looks a bit thin and squeezed. This means that the completion of the thought which the person wants to do, maybe he's completing it, but he's feeling that he's under pressure or he has to do it quickly or he has to do it hastily. So as the O becomes thinner, the haste, the nature of haste increases. Okay. So have a healthy O, an O which is genuinely rounded, slight ovalish, that's fine. But the moment becomes too thin and very sharp or angular, and almost sometimes you see the O such look like letter E or I, extremely thin. That's where the trouble can happen. Okay. All right. So. Any more questions and queries do you have today? Do you have any doubts? Okay. All right, so we've got a query here. What happens when the person does a large circle or makes a large circle instead of a dot over the eye so when you have an eye and a dot is replaced by a proper circle what happens generally when a dot turns into a circle it shows that the person wants to highlight their thoughtfulness so whenever these people say thank you whenever these people say sorry or whatever they're trying to be mindful it's a bit loud it's it's a very much visible and audible to many people around you now in certain situations i guess that's fine like let's say a child at a restaurant says thank you loudly and everybody knows that he's thanking the chef for the lovely meal but then if everybody is loud and it, it, it becomes a bit noisy that's certainly not really good okay 
So when all you have a let the eye structure which has got a circle as a dot, these people are thoughtful, but they want their thoughtfulness to be recognized. All right. So uh, next one is uh, there's this letter structure which one of the audience members has sent. I'll just draw the structure and I'll show it to you online. Okay. So, someone's drawn a letter P like this. Okay. Someone's draw a letter P, a P like this, and they want to know what this angle is all about. So, this angle of the letter P over here, it represents a kind of a thought pattern of a past giving attitude. Past giving attitude means that the, see now the capital letter P represents thought confirming with emotions. Like let's take for example, you want to buy a white t-shirt and while you're buying the white t-shirt, you're trying to see whether you like it or not. You've decided that you want to buy a white t-shirt. Now you want to just Check with your emotions whether you are enjoying or you like to have this white t-shirt. Now with this extra stroke on the letter P, what happens is that it shows that you're thinking about whether you should spend the money or not, whether the money that you want to give for the t-shirt, is it worth it? Is it worth the amount which is on the price tag? That's why you're trying to think about, all right? It's, it's more like a um, unnecessary stroke in the middle of the structure. It's not a starting stroke. It's not an ending stroke because the starting stroke of the letter P, the starting point of the letter P is here and the ending point is here. So you go here, you go up and then you go like this. So this is the ending stroke. Okay. So the ending stroke is here. Starting stroke is here. This is not an ending stroke or a starting stroke. This is just a stroke that is going to represent uh, extra thought within the letter structure. Okay. All right. Next, uh, next question. What about the O that crosses on at the top? All right. So you have a O. If you have a O, which has a crossover at the top, like this, okay? If you have a O which is having a crossover, this represents that the person is going to have arguments or debates about whether a activity or a, a daily thought is complete. Let's take for example, you're watching a movie and the movie suddenly finishes and, you, and the story doesn't feel like it's ended yet. So then you get this question in your mind. That's it. Is the story over? Is the movie over? Whenever you watch a movie which, where the story is not written correctly and you're wondering something more is going to happen, but then nothing happens and the movie closes. That's when you get this question marks in the I mean, you get this crossover in the O. Somebody is submitted to your completed project, but it doesn't look complete. There are a lot of incomplete aspects in that project. That's where the O will get a crossover. Let's say you're baking a cookie or a cake or something, and you remove it from the oven, and you can see that it's not completely baked. So that's where the O again gets a crossover. Crossover generally represents a question thought. What does it mean when the I dots are slashes? So when the I dot is just a slash means that when this person was wanting to be mindful or thoughtful, that aspect was annoying. Let's say you don't like a person and you have to still 
deal with that person okay you have to still say still you have to say thank you to that person then it doesn't feel nice but you say thank you but the thank you is more out of an irritation and sometimes in a disgust let's say you go to a shop and the shopkeeper is very rude and nasty and very uh rough in his behavior but anyway he is giving you the product so when you say thank you how you say thank you it's a more of a annoying irritating thank you so that is where the pen click or the slash happens in the dot if you have too many times a slash happening in dot it seems that you might be around people or you may be around situations where being mindful being manneric being in mannerisms is going to be difficult and that's why it's annoying okay if you're trying to be nice to a rude person how you feel it's difficult all right so another question is uh what is mystic graphology okay so recently i had announced mystic graphology on my facebook pages and on my uh, even on my whatsapp and you instagram account so mystic graphology is the ability of a person to analyze just the way a name is written the name of a person can have a certain vibration in terms of its energy and its sound because it's one of the only words in that person's life which has been repeated since the childhood you've heard many words in your life no matter what language you speak but the word that comes up the most is your name your name is the most common word in your mind since the, your childhood so that name has a different effect on you so let's take for example if your name is uh, rahul okay but if i say hello john hello mary hello steven rahul doesn't feel anything but the moment i say hi rahul so the moment i say that word it triggers some kind of a vibration and when the person writes this word again it's a very special word why because it represents that person and since you've been writing this word since a many since many years since a long time since your childhood that's why it holds a special kind of a body language memory in mystic graphology we are trying to understand whether this body language memory of the most common word in your life has an effect on you and if you write it correctly is there an advantage so if you would like to learn mystic graphology i do have courses you can sign up and with that what happens is you get the ability to analyze a person just by the way they write their name all right okay so uh, we have another question here if p is flat at the bottom and not rounded what does it mean so uh, if you have a letter structure and it's difficult for you to describe or you want to send a picture to it picture to me just send it to my whatsapp i'll just type in the whatsapp number on the chat box here and you can uh, send me an image of the letter structure you want me to talk about then i'll draw it on my paper and i'll show it live on the stream i can't share my screen on this live stream so i can't show you the direct image but i can draw it and then i can explain it to you okay so now the question is my low case n has recently started to look like the letter h and the second hump is almost very small okay so now again whenever you have a letter structure which gets distorted at such to such an extent where it looks like something completely different that means that the letter structure has changed its meaning unnecessarily and generally shows some kind of a manipulation so if you are saying that your letter m actually looks like letter h and n 
that means that the letter structure h and n replace the thought patterns of letter m what does that mean this means that if you are normally reading also it could create create a kind of a confusion like if you let's say you have the word must m u s t but your m looks like h n so then it looks like h n u s t so if you written the word must you want it to mean must but it reads something different and now the other person is trying to confirm with you whether you written as correct word or not so these misunderstandings and these manipulations happen when the letter structure doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like okay generally when a person has got this aspect of a writing where the letter structure alters very much that aspect of the person's life is not set well and it's difficult for them to achieve any positive result from that thought pattern so if your letter m has gone for a toss it's looking like something else other than m this is where you are going to have difficulties with habit creating a new habit or being consistent with the habit is a part of letter m's mindset or thought pattern and if the m is not made correctly then that thought pattern is no longer going to be easy for you to maintain okay so all right that's it so there's a question here what does a huge lead in stroke mean so i guess you're talk talking about a starting stroke what if a person has a long starting stroke like this the a is here but the person is trying to be fancy now if the nature of the person's attitude to write is to be fancy is to be uh creative like it's a greeting card then that is fine it's okay to be fancy but if you are having a normal writing sample for analysis there is no real requirement to be fancy and then the person writes constantly the starting strokes that is where we see that the letter st structure has got overthinking overthinking means the person is trying to think much before they actually start the activity and it can delay and make things procrastinate quite a lot all right next one is the next query is at times i procrastinate and i keep think thinking about doing things a lot of ideas but no action which letter do i need to correct so it's uh, this question and the query above it are quite matching if you have if you have too many of the starting strokes in your writing you can stop using the starting strokes like the letter where it is supposed to start started exactly there now if you are having a lot of procrastination and you're not able to be consistent with your uh, activities you're not able to start your activity correctly the main concern is that the reason why you're doing the activity is very weak the why question why you're doing something if that why question is weak in your mind then procrastination becomes an option okay let's say for example especially in india uh, when you go to catch a cab okay if the cab comes to your home to pick you up you can tell the cab oh please give me 5 minutes uh, i'll come out you can tell the cab to wait for a while correct because the reason of catching the cab and the nature of catching a cab is not strict that's why we've got a procrastinating mindset or a procrastination effect over there but when you want to go to an airport to catch a flight the airport tells you the the airlines tells you the please come 2 hours before the flight please come 3 hours before the flight so because that rule is properly fixed and you have to come much before now the attitude to catching a flight 
becomes so important and strict that there is no chance of procrastination and procrastination feels bad when you catch a flight so whether you're catching a cab or whether you're catching a flight you see there's a difference in the nature of this urgency or the importance so whenever you have a difference in the importance of what you're doing that's where procrastination will come in. if something is not as important to you then you will procrastinate if it is important to you then you won't procrastinate if you are feeling lazy and you are not able to start things then develop a strong why reason and then you can pursue your activity in a much more stronger manner okay it's like having a boyfriend or a girlfriend if she is not if she is not as important to you as you feel in your mind then the person is not going to be given attention enough but if that girlfriend or boyfriend or your wife or whoever your relative is important to you then you will give that importance so procrastination is a direct correlation of a weak why reason now the why reason is uh visible in weak flexor or extensor strokes if you have a weak flexor stroke or a weak extensor stroke it affects the way you approach activities where you need to do things on time so if you want to learn more about a proper flexor or an extensor i have a course called as micrographology or quick graphology quick graphology and micrographology both have got this topic where you can learn about this stroke and if you improve the quality of your flexor or your extensor it can help you to avoid procrastination okay so let's go for the next question here all right how do you analyze a language that you don't understand so whenever we are analyzing handwriting or whenever we are doing practice of graphology we look at we look at structures we look at shapes we look at forms we look at geometric patterns okay so these patterns have got little to do with the actual language in a broad sense language does have an effect on the mind but at the latest structure level it does not so whether you are analyzing a language which you know or whether you are analyzing a language which you don't know does it matter because you are looking at a letter structure now if you are taught 10 types of t if you top 10 types of m then you are going to be stuck with that letter formation because you don't you are not been taught of how to calculate the letter structure you have just been taught that you look at this structure and you have to say this sentence that's not really analysis that's just passing the parcel you're just trying to say what somebody else has said if you understand letter structures if you understand handwriting patterns that is where you'll be able to analyze any language in the world and that's what i normally teach in any of the courses which i conduct all right so let's go for next question here uh i received a question on my whatsapp okay so the question here is how many hours a day do i practice handwriting analysis so initially like when i started learning graphology way back in 2005 it was almost like an obsession not obsession in a negative form but obsession in a positive happy happy go lucky kind of a feeling so sometimes i would spend almost 4 to 5 hours 6 hours 8 hours sometimes on a good day to analyze the writing on an average i would spend around 6 to 7 hours a day not for one sample for multiple handwriting samples just keep on analyzing practicing and because i was a college student that time i had many friends and teachers and 
institution uh, staff the way they would be happy to give me their handwriting just for me to practice but off late let's say last couple of years maybe i spent an hour or two for analysis per day the rest of the time i either teach graphology or do research or i do or provide graphotherapy to people so are there any more queries any more questions any more doubts you would like to ask thank you everybody for tuning in it was nice it's nice to see you online live with me all right so next question The next question is, what if we have a letter E where the loop is not consistent? An inconsistent loop in the letter E would represent that the person's ability, ability to handle culture is not consistent. Culture could be anything. It could be a religious culture. It could be an education culture. It could be a work culture. It could be your own life's culture, the way you handle things on a daily basis so when you have a letter e which is not consistent especially the loop part of it it shows that the creativity that you require to handle different aspects of your culture is not easy for you to manage okay the next question what does a short l indicate so l is a tall letter in english it goes from the upper zone you go and goes down into the middle zone so it's quite a tall letter so you have a letter a letter c and then letter l is quite tall if you have a short letter l not almost looks like letter i it means that there are moments where you're supposed to think and act the thinking part is done less let's take for example you want to catch a train to a certain location now you have to think do you want to go by the faster train or do you want to go by the slower train do you want to go in the morning do you want to go in the evening there's a bit of a planning required and then you have to buy the ticket right but when the person uh, has a short l and he's not thinking too much the thinking part has reduced he's just going to the counter and asking for the ticket not really planning whether the train is going to leave immediately or after a couple of hours. And now when he buys the ticket, he realizes that he has to wait for four hours for the train to leave. So without thinking, what happens is that these people sometimes have a difficulty in handling life because they don't think. They don't think and do things and then things go for a mess. So a short L means the person won't think too much. Normally, you find short L in children's handwriting where they don't think too much and they just keep on doing whatever they want to do. All right. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. So which other question do we have today here? The question here, is it possible to combine the analysis of different letter structures? Yes, analysis of different letter structures and compiling them into a new thought pattern is the key to good analysis. If you want to do amazingly good analysis, if you want to stand out from other graphologists, just choose your own variations and combinations of different letter structures and you'll be able to always have a unique experience of analysis you see the individual letter structures the individual concepts of graphology they have only one thing that they say the individual aspects but when you combine different aspects then you get a completely different perspective of the person's sample so whenever you 
improve you want to improve your skill of analysis combine letter structures so you can go to my youtube channel and look at the different letter structure meanings and try to see if you can do two letter at a time analysis combine letter a and c combine letter g and y combine letter n and m so if you see two letters at a time you'll see a different aspect of the person which i have not explained in the videos also once you get mastery of two letters then you can go for three letter analysis four letter you can do macro and micro combined and there are too many combinations to work with all right so next is uh, can you give more advice on how to improve body language now i'm not a body language expert but in a way being a graphologist means that you got a good idea of body language at the fingertip level but if you want to improve body language overall the main thing is to just focus on your spinal cord the spinal cord straightness i mean straight vertically and laterally all these different axes of straightening the back is the best way to make your body language good once your back is straight then focus on your shoulder focus on your hip joint hip joint and shoulder if they are comfortable if they are good then that also leads to a good body language and if you have a positive confident mindset the body language automatically becomes better one very important way to improve body language is to do regular push ups push ups it means you get on the floor and just push your body up again and again like you keep on going up and down why i'm saying this is because push ups makes your shoulder makes your back your torso your mid body strong when the core of your body when the mid part of your body is strong your body language will improve generally a weak body language is a sign that somewhere in the middle part of the body from the shoulder to the hip the muscles are not very strong or not very well uh stretched so push ups regular on a regular basis is good if you don't know how to do push ups there's so many videos on youtube where there are experts teaching you how to start with push ups okay all right next is uh, okay okay so we have another question here next question is okay this is a bit of a complicated question uh what i would suggest is that when we are asking a question keep simple phrases keep simple sentences and if you try to ask multiple questions in one paragraph then it's difficult to specify the answer so the question over here is that how do you detect diabetes from handwriting if possible and can it be avoided you can't avoid a disease by changing writing but by changing writing you can lead to a slightly stress free life or reduce the stress in your life and that can lead to better immune system so if you want to check whether the person has diabetes just check the letter o if there are sharp points in the letter o the angles in the letter o it's a indicator that this person sugar level tends to spike whether they feel hungry or whether they have eaten food and not given enough time for digestion both ways the sugar level is going to fluctuate and normally a diabetic person will not find it easy to have a well formed o letter structure 
if he consciously does the o letter structure obviously the o is going to come out well but in normal writing the o will go back to being inconsistent okay all right so are there any more queries any more questions any more doubts that you like to sort out hello so that's it for today any more queries all right so we've got another question here what if my r has got no loop letter r is one of the few letter structures in the english alphabet where a loop is a complement to it normally loops in the middle zone of the handwriting shows complication but in the case of letter r it shows creativity so the more proportionate the loop the better if the r has a big loop it's too much it's overdone creativity but if the r's loop is proportionate it looks decent in terms of its size and thickness and overall roundedness it shows that the person's creativity has got a good timing and also is able to express in a pleasant way if your r does not have a loop if it has got a retrace or an angle then what's going to happen is that it might lead to uh, a lack of creativity or when you're supposed to be creative there is going to be difficulty in you trying to do things in a different way okay all right is there a letter that can help someone improve their commitment ability commitment ability can be improved by stronger cross bars if you have letter t or letter f whenever you write these two letters make sure that cross bar is proper not too long not too short but when you do that make sure you have a good pen stop make sure you have a proper structure of a cross bar it should be balanced equal on both sides and uh, also for good commitment um, make sure you got a well formed letter d structure small letter d it goes up and down that coordination of letter d will show you the ability of the person to maintain commitment commitment requires comfort zone and letter d represents comfort zone that is congruent to the nature of commitment so whenever the person's letter d is inconsistent commitment issues can be seen in this person's behavior so letter t f and d are letters which you can look out for if they are made well it's easier to have a committed focus okay now the next question here is how many times a day sh should you practice a letter structure to improve the mindset now if you are a student who writes very often notes on a daily basis then a page or two of writing is more than comfortable but if you are a person who doesn't write very often and you barely hold a pen in your hand uh, in, in your lifestyle nowadays then maybe two to three pages is good enough but then practicing handwriting and not having real life responsibilities which include writing that's not going to work for in terms of graphotherapy if you want to change your writing and improve the letter structure just for improving the structure then that is fine you can practice a page one page a day five minutes a day it will be more than sufficient all right so we are done for today thank you very much and we'll again connect later all right we got one last minute question here uh where does 
okay where do you find uh i'm not able to answer the question which has been posted on my whatsapp so the person who sent it please rephrase the question and send it again and you can rephrase it and i'll answer it to you directly on whatsapp or we can come next time live on the youtube channel and we can have a live session and answer the question live directly okay so thank you very much and uh, good day and good night and good evening good afternoon wherever you are and see you again next week same time same place thank you for tuning in and good day